Hello everyone and welcome to Mars Product of the Month webinar, the C1200 Bench Amplifier and P2004 and 1318 probes. I'm George Schutz, your presenter, Director of Precision Gauges here in Providence, Rhode Island. If you have any questions during the presentation, use the chat feature and I will respond to your questions after the webinar by email. So today we're gonna to learn about the Millimar product of the month, the uh, C1200 bench amplifier. We'll talk about what it is, its features, some applications, and why you need it to be uh, your amplifier of choice. And since you can't have an amplifier by itself, you need some probes to be used with it. We're going to introduce you to the P2004 and 1318 lever style probe, go over some of its technical data and applications. Hope you find the, the following valuable. So what is the C1200 bench amplifier? Well, it's a compact full feature bench amplifier that uses one probe, an LVDT based probe as its input. It can be battery or line powered. It can be bench mounted. There's holes in the back to wall mount it or because it's battery powered, you can use it as a portable instrument. It has a customizable display where you can choose three different display formats. And it, because of its fast response, I think it's a great replacement for old analog bench amplifiers. So the C1200's features include its, its one probe input. It's an LVDT based probe input. It's a very fast, very high response, uh, high precision LVDT. We build the accuracy into Mars probes where you can get a 0.1 uh, micron or a five micro inch resolution. So it's a very good amplifier uh, that gives you a high uh, quality performance. The display is a high resolution format and high contrast color display it has a very fast refresh rate, about you know, 40 hertz or better, and it really achieves a realistic simulation of an analog meter. And that's always been a little bit of a drawback with a lot of amplifiers in the past, that you, know, you would have a digital display trying to simulate an analog meter, but they didn't really do a very good job of it. I think the C1200 really meets the requirements and gives you a very smooth, analog type of display. It's a colored display where the background can be used as tolerance markers for your uh, part qualifications. As you'll see that the display can change from white to green to red uh, when, the, when the tolerances are turned on. I thought I'd try to, to give, give you a little indication of how smooth the display looks like. This is probably the best picture, but the indication of the, the green display. You can see I'm moving the probe now with uh, my LVDT and both the, the analog meter and the display are very smooth. You can see when I go beyond the set tolerances, the displays uh, turns red. So this is a pretty clear and easy to read display for parts to quickly glance at the results to know that part that they're measuring is good or bad. These are tough, hard uh, key buttons on the uh, display, but they do have a feedback to them. When you press them, you'll see that little click uh, that the button has been then pushed. So that they, it gives you the indication that uh, you've made the connection with that keypad. They have, uh, kind of a soft key function where you can see that they line up with these little soft key selections up here. So you can uh, have less keys on the display, but know when that key is active. And this is a fully waterproof keypad. So it's protected from, from moisture getting in through the keypad. 
When it's on battery power, you can select to use battery power if you like, and you can use standard AA batteries or rechargeable batteries. Uh, you plug them in, and it can, if you don't have the power plugged in, it'll work off the batteries and give you uh, hours and hours of, uh, of use as a portable amplifier. When we say flexible housing, you can see that the display folds up or folds down so that you can angle it to the most ergonomic reading position. You can then take that amplifier, you can, can wall mount it, or you can just fold it up and store it away so it doesn't take up a lot of room. You can just basically put it in a drawer with the probe and uh, it's stored away and uh, won't get damaged. On the connectivity side, in the back of the amplifier, you'll see that there is a, a connector for, for one inductive probe. You have your power connector. And then we have one of our standard connectors for, uh, for data output. So this is a, an RS-232E duplex interface. It's bi-directional. And you can use cable connections. Or if you like, you can... Uh, use one of Mars add-on wireless modules with our e-stick and take that uh, wireless data transmission into Marcom. And just to remind you that Marcom is a free software package offered by Mar where you can connect wireless products, uh, add-on wireless modules or cabled products uh, through Marcom and and store the data into Excel sheets, uh, any Windows-based software, third-party uh, data collection packages, or you can put them in a, a QDOS uh, SPC software system and, uh, and transfer that information into existing customers' packages. And why do we do that? Well, we know that uh, that data collection continues to be one of the fastest growth areas for customers for, for documentation, process control, process improvement. We've learned how with Marcom, you're able to assign serial numbers and part numbers to gauges so that that information can be stored with the, the measurement results. So this makes the whole idea of data collection transparent for the operator. You have no add-on modules. Uh, the, the part is just a normal measuring routine, if you if you like, um, and you can get long battery life through our wireless products. So Marcom is free. It's a great value, a lot less costly than some other competitive systems that are out there. As I said, the, uh, the, the display is kind of a menu guidance type of display where frequently used functions are always available with the soft keys uh, when in the measuring mode. So this is the display of what the measuring mode looks like. And you can see we have soft keys here down that allow us to put those functions that are always up there. The left one being the menu key, auto zero, when we have the analog uh, display up here with its graduations, these two keys are used to reduce or increase the resolution. And of course, we have our send data key on the right here. Also on the display is the, the digital value showing that we're in millimeters. The little plug here indicates that we're on line power. And up in the left-hand corner, it shows us the uh, the, the probe polarity. So we're using probe A with a plus polarity. So lots of information. And this is the, the digital bar graph display option. And as we get into the, uh, into the menu, the, the, I think it's a pretty simple and straightforward uh, cursor movement and function selection. So you know, it's pretty clear that a check mark means you want to select something, and cursors, up and down arrows are easy ways to navigate the uh, through the system. You know, so for example, you know the, the here's we're into the menu mode here. 
across the top are various tabs, just like you might have a tab in an, in an Excel sheet or something like that. And you would, when you go into the menu, when you start up in the measuring tab, you would use two right arrow keys to get into setup. You press the down key twice, for example, to get into the probe type, and then you select that. And then one tap on the, the check mark to select the standard probe. So you can see you can get to various displays very quickly just following the, uh, the cursor keys. Everything is, is, is menu driven, and this is going to show you the various tabs that we have available, but allows me to talk about the features that are in the, in the product. So these are, these are things that have to do with the measuring function that we're going to, uh, to work with on the C1200. So in the measuring uh, tab here, we can put master values in, the nominal value, set our tolerances, create our formula, change the polarity, choose functions. We have the functions of normal, do our mins and maxes, T, you know, like TIRs, for example, so that we have some dynamic functions available to us. And if we need a, a factor like for doing it a V or a, a long probe or something like that, we have a multiplier we can use. On the display side, we have the ability to change the resolution, change our display style. We have some color scheme options. Uh, we can choose to zero on the, uh, the nominal value if we like. And you have some adjustment of the brightness of the display. So here's the three different uh, display uh, formats that we find on the display tab here. So the one on the left, of course, is the analog digital value. The center is our digital resolution only. And then the, the, uh, bot, the, the right one is our analog display. You see they're, they're all very clear, easy to read and uh, very bright. So even far away from the, uh, from the user, you can get an in, a good indication of what that display is doing. The third tab we have is the setup tab, and this is where we have some more basic information about the, the setup, where we can select the languages, we can select the units to be in inches, in millimeters, or in microns. Uh, MAR makes a couple of different probe types, the standard probes or long range probes, and you would select the probe you're using. And then we have an economy mode so that you can help save a battery life uh, with this eco mode. It'll cut down the display of the brightness a little bit and, and help the batteries last longer. And then the system uh, uh, tab allows us to select a, an absolute mode, uh, like a true spindle mode where we can use a display to position the probe. It shows the, uh, the probe position without regards to any zeroing function that you might have done in the past. We also give customers the ability to do a, a, a calibration of the system. Uh, we have a factory calibration that we can do. There are some factory settings that uh, are available through a password. Uh, you can do some key keyboard uh, interlocking or, or prevent users from auto zeroing or doing some things. And then we have an info uh, tab that allows us to see what version software we have and so forth. So these four tabs allow you to do all the setup information that you would need uh, for your specific application. So speaking of applications or measuring tasks, here's some, some of the basic ones. You know, the, the 1200 is a basic amplifier single probe but there's a lot of different measuring things uh, that you can do with it. So here's a, a C1200, the probe in our basic stand, measuring a simple, simple thickness. Uh, because this is a short range probe, uh, this would be a comparative type measurement where we want to have a master to set the zero 
and we would make our readings comparing uh, the part uh, and its deviation to the master. Of course, you can you know, use this as a short range probe if you were measuring film thickness or, or something like that. You can bring that probe right down to the uh, to the reference surface, set zero, and slide the uh, the part underneath it to get an actual uh, reading without the master. We have a dynamic mode we, we mentioned before where you know we could instead of trying to look for the the high point of this uh, this diameter reading, we can put the amplifier into a dynamic max mode and it would remember that value or remember the peak as the part is passed through. And I think I can show you a little bit of this. It might be a little dark, but let's see how it looks here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is reset the dynamic and now we can take that cylinder, pass it through, and you can see that it grabs the highest value. We get another part and we can do the same thing. Reset, pass the part through. I think we'll do it one more time. So this makes a very quick and easy way to, to grab the diameters and not having to search for the, the high part. Well, of course you can, you can put a flat contact on this and make it a little bit easier to, uh, to find the diameter, but the dynamic uh, mode helps us to do that. Another way of where the dynamic mode could come into play is when we're doing uh, an adjustable bore gauge, for example, and you're, you're sweeping a part through there, or you're, you're looking for a, an ID with a 36B gauge, for example, you can use the dynamic mode to grab the maximum value. Because the fixed pl bore plugs are the, the, uh, one of the highest uh, performance plug type gauging or ID gauging applications, the C1200 is a perfect match for that, uh, for that diameter measurement. But it's high performance, high resolution. Now you can get uh, very good performance out of your bore plug. And again, you can use it as a bench mount amplifier, or you can carry the amplifier and the bore gauge around to the part. You know, if you have very large parts, to make the uh, to make the diameter readings uh, very portable. Again, you can see here that we're classifying the parts as we make our measurements. There's some other run out type application. You know, before I showed a, a part uh, being passed under the probe, but if you put the part, if you put the probe on the part and you and use it in a dynamics max minus min mode, you can uh, get a, a uh, indication of part run out or TIR of that part. Same thing on the right, where we're looking for a, a squareness type of check. We can see how square that face is to the surface. So you can, because of the, the fast display, you can, you can watch the analog display go back and forth. But with the dynamic mode, you can capture those digital values, remembering the total sweep that the probe has seen. Another type of run-on application is flatness. So we can mount the probe into a, a granite surface plate, for example. The surface plate that acts as a reference for flatness because surface plates have a known reference. They're very flat. They're lapped to their, uh, their requirements. And now as you pass the part over the, of the probe in a dynamic mode, it's going to see the high spots and the low spots. And of course, the difference between those two results are the, uh, the flatness of the part that's being measured. Here's a little example of using the 1318 probe where we're trying to measure inside, oh, this could be a, a slot or it could be a diameter. Uh, we're trying to measure wall thickness. Uh, the 1318 is a great probe because of its small contact, getting into small areas uh, to make the check. So this is a valuable tool for these types of measurements. 
So why do we need the C1200? Well, it's a, it's a great bench amplifier. It has good display formats. It's nice, bright, easy to read. It simulates an analog display for our dynamic checks. It has all the features needed, being inch metric, normal reverse. You can use tolerances, enter your master deviation. You can calibrate the amplifier yourself. It has data outputs. It's a very high value product because of its features for the price, and especially now since it's a product of the month. And it's a great way to economically upgrade a, a, you know, a digital or a bench dial indicator type of gauge. Consider the price of a uh, an amplifier and probe. You know, that's it may be twice the price of a digital indicator, but you're going to get a lot more resolution, a lot more performance, have your data output, and because of the the bright display. Customers and users really like the display and make it easier for them to read. It's just so much larger and so much brighter than a, a digital indicator type of display. It's simple, it's easy to use. You know, machinists are, are machinists, they're meant to, uh, to manufacture parts and they don't necessarily uh, uh, work at being quality control inspectors, but with a nice display like the C1200, uh, it gives them the ability to make their decisions on part quality very quickly with the, uh, the color tolerance indications. And of course, you can get the data collection with Marcom, making that again, transparent to the operator because uh, he just makes his measurement, the data can be collected and he can go on to the next part. But a C1200 does not do much without a probe. You need some way to get that, that, that deviation or a, a sensor to measure the part. And then the C1200 actually takes that signal, amplifies it, and makes it easier for the operator to, to, uh, to use. So you can see here that MAR offers a complete line of uh, different type probes. Uh, they're LVDT style, spring-loaded, air push or vacuum retract. They're all heavy duty, meant to be used out in a shop type environment. They have uh, bellows to, um, to keep them protected from, uh, from splashes and so forth. We also have a lever style with the, the 1318, as you can see. And all the, uh, the probe styles employ the, the marble bushing, which gives them long life. They're very resistant to side play. So as you slide parts under the contact, the, uh, the bearings in there are, are meant to, uh, to take that type of shock and it won't degrade over time. So these are very high performance, high repeatable type of, uh, type of probes. Now the P2004 probe is our most common uh, LVT type of probe. It has a plus or minus two millimeter measuring range. Uh, you can get the get them in, in vacuum or air pushed. Uh, very good repeatability down to uh, a half of a half of a micron. Uh, very good sensitivity and a very good linearity. So these are your this is the perfect probe for the performance of a, uh, of a C1200. You can see up in the icons up here, it shows it has the, the, the uh, MAR uh, rotary stroke bearings in it. It's IP64, which means it's splash proof. And because of its performance, it's the ideal probe to go along with our SM60 to make uh, high performance uh, OD types of measurements. And the probe can be configured for different applications. Uh, this is the, the, the basically the very part of the probe which can be unscrewed. And you'll see that 14 there is a spring. The springs are interchangeable. So if you need lighter or heavier gauging forces, uh, you can change the spring and accommodate for that. It uses a 2.5 millimeter thread contact, so all the DIN style 
uh, contacts that uh, that Mar offers can be screwed in there. If you need a, a bigger ball or a bigger radius or a knife edge or whatever, we can accommodate those different applications. One of the great things that the spindle pre-travel can be adjusted for easier part placed and then again locked in place with a, a lock nut. So you know, very often you know, with a two millimeter range and you're trying to slip a part underneath there, uh, sometimes you need a pretty big contact to, to slip that part underneath there. But what you can do is you can unlock the locking nut and then turn the whole um, probe to reposition the, the zero location. So now instead of having plus or minus two millimeters range, you might have, we'll say um, plus two, but it only stick out maybe a half a millimeter. So now that you can get that part under there, there underneath the, the probe easily, uh, make it a little bit easier for the, for the operator to use and uh, um, much simpler for him to put in a, a bench type application. And of course it has the ball bushing for, for long life. And then we have a lever style probe. You know, these are probes that are typically used in, in surface plate work uh, where the probe is mounted to a stand and we make comparative measurements between say a gauge block or a, a Cadillac gauge and a, and a part to a transfer type measurement. Or you might use a, a, a application such as this one where the, the probe is put on the part between Vs or on centers the part is rotated and we would be checking for run out. So these are probes and you can also use this type of probe say in a in a machine tool for helping align uh, uh, the part to center that part to the spindle. And of course you would rotate the, uh, the probe around and help you locate the part so that you can do your drilling or grinding operation more precisely. Again, this is a high performance probe repeatability of 1.2 micro inches, a very good hysteresis. So it's a, a great probe to, uh, to use on a surface plate application. So in summary, we've discussed what the C1200 is, its features, accessories and applications and probe options. It's a great a choice to be used at the point of manufacture because of its simplicity bright display, uh, easy easiness of, to use, and it's even a greater value since it's the product of the month. I think you've all gotten a copy of the, our promotional flyer. Uh, these prices are 15, 20% off of the list price. Uh, they're available in stock and we can make quick deliveries on these. And if you buy uh, these products in the, in the month of February, you'll get a free Mar mug. So there's nothing better value than that. Why choose Mar? Well, Mar offers a very broad product range of industrial metrology products. We have the application competence to support you. Products like the C1200, they're, they're innovative. They're different than the competition. Uh, fast response, great display, good cost. They set our, some of these products set us apart from the competition. And these, these promotional prices make the, the value even better. So as after the, uh, the webinar is complete here, we're going to send you a link to this. And then again, we'll, we'll follow up again with a PDF of the product of the month data sheet. So thank you for your attention. Remember, use the, uh, the chat screen if you have any questions and I'll answer them for you. Thank you again for your attention and have a great rest of the day.